have an idea in your mind of something you want and you deserve to get it. So how do you get there? Well, welcome to the Idea Space, a podcast devoted to helping you overcome frustration and make what you want a reality. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, high school teacher turned entrepreneur. Now I'm a business development coach. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, overwhelmed, or lost. Every week, I share topics, tools, and strategies to help you move toward that thing you want. Create time and energy to do the things you love, get clarity on what you really want and how to get there, and most importantly, stop feeling alone with your challenges. Whether you've wanted to create a better business, job, relationship, hobby, or self, I know there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it with confidence and clarity. Ready to have it? Let's go. Hello, and welcome back to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, and you know that my mission is to help women achieve their goals, start their businesses, grow their businesses, get where they want to go, and try to move out what's in the way. This week, I have been thinking about the reason that women don't get what they want. And sometimes it's because of fear, fear of failure, fear of success. Sometimes it's because they don't know how. That's confusion. Totally understandable. But the biggest thing I hear from women is that they don't get their businesses started. They don't grow their businesses. They don't achieve their goals because they have guilt. Guilt that if they put themselves on the list of things to take care of, that somehow it will take away from everybody else in their lives. And the women I work with are juggling a lot of balls in the air. They've got their families, they've got their businesses, uh, they've got relationships, they've got homes, they've, there's just so much they're trying to take care of. And so they feel like if they put themselves on the list that something will fall off and they feel guilty about that. So I really... I'm not kidding. I hear this basically every day from a client in one form or another. And I started to think about who could really give us insight into this. Should we feel guilty as women for wanting to do what we need to do? So I asked a very savagely, brutally honest person, my 12 year old son. I literally have never met anybody more savagely honest than him. And he's direct, he's thoughtful, he's intelligent. So I thought maybe he would grant me an interview so that I could ask him some questions. Hey, should I feel guilty that I'm running and growing a business and that sometimes you are not my number one first priority? Sometimes I need to take care of my business. Remember that Jack's dad is also an entrepreneur too. So he's got it coming from both ends. Can we raise a kid and not ruin him? while taking care of what we need to take care of. So he uh, he did give me an interview and today's podcast is that interview. I thought it would be good food for you to consume in your brain. Just thinking about how do you let guilt get in your way and how can you learn what Jack has to teach today and use it to help yourself move forward in a way that feels more productive to you, in a way that feels authentic to you and in a way where you're not feeling like you're taking away from somebody else, but you're actually giving them something. Because Jack gives some really great insights in this interview where he shares what he's gotten out of not being the um, number one only priority where I don't, where I feel depleted. And he actually sees the benefits of what it looks like when a mother and father put themselves on the list of things to take care of. So please enjoy. One thing I want to tell you, the audio sounds a little bit weird, maybe because he and I could not get on two different computers. So we had to share a computer and a mic. So please enjoy this, this interview and I will see you on the other side. Bye. Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's interview. Today, I am interviewing my son, Jack. I normally interview entrepreneurs, but today I wanted to interview somebody affected by being the son of entrepreneurs. And so Jack is 12 years old, and he has a lot of opinions about a lot of things. And I'm curious to see what he has to say about what it's like to be the kid of an entrepreneur. Here's why. What I hear from a lot of women is that they're afraid to really start a business because they are terrified that they will have to give up their family or they'll, they won't be able to take care of their family as well as they want to. So I thought Jack might have some insights as to what it's like from the kid's point of view and what he's learned by being the son of two entrepreneurs because my husband is also an entrepreneur. So Jack, thanks for being here, man. You're welcome. I'm pretty excited. All right, let's go. So the first question I have for you is, do you think a woman 
could be a mom and a business owner and be good at both? Yeah, I do. Mostly because I feel like a lot of people feel like being a mom is a 24-7 job, mm -hmm. which it may be, but I don't really know. <laughs> you don't really know. But for you, you have time like during the day when I'm at school. You can do your work there. Mm -hmm. And I've also learned to like do school work at school mm -hmm. so that it's not like a problem so that I can be with you. Oh, so when you come home, you make sure that we spend mm -hmm. time together. That's so that we spend time so that it's not just me doing my homework and you sitting there. But sometimes it is me sitting there, right? Like sometimes I have work sometimes to do. it is, but usually it's when it's not a big problem for me. If there was something that like we really wanted to do or we planned on it, you would definitely do that over your business, which I think is nice. Right, like sometimes I have to make a choice with my business mm -hmm. to reschedule things around Jack's schedule, but mostly I try to get my work done. But there's many times when I get up early in the morning or I work later at night when he's asleep, but he's also kind of learned, actually you've learned to be pretty independent, I think. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think I have, but that's also because I'm an only child, so that helps a little bit. Do you think if you had brothers and sisters, you wouldn't be able to be independent? I think I'd still be independent, but I don't think I would be as independent as I am now. Meaning that you would play with your brothers and sisters more? Probably, yeah. Or fight with them? <laughs> Let's just say play. So tell me how you've been independent. What are some of the ways you've learned to be independent? Uh, I like to play by myself, like playing cards. Like You are good at that. Mm -hmm. You are good at that. Yeah, there's a lot of fun things you can just do by yourself. Mm -hmm. So you think that us being entrepreneurs and uh, giving you the space and the time to learn how to do things on your own has been good for you? Is that what you're saying? I think it has, but it's also you guys didn't just talk, throw me into the water and hope I'd Mm. You helped me with certain things, just kind of got me into it. And if I really like something or I seem to like it, you help me embrace that, and then I can do that while you have to work because something bad happened with a client or something like that. Okay, so my next question is, mm -hmm. a lot of moms and dads have jobs. Yep. And a lot of moms are entrepreneurs and the dads work, or the moms work and the dads are entrepreneurs. So my question is, what is it like to have parents who have businesses instead of jobs? Well, I don't really know what it's like to have a parent who has a job. That's one thing. But mm -hmm. personally, I think people who have a job, they kind of got their time set, like when they have to do, when they have to do it, and they have an understanding of when it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. and they get the information before it happens, like versus somebody who owns a business, like lightning could strike at any moment, pretty much like. Oh, like I might have a yeah. client to deal with or a problem mm -hmm. to deal with or something like a crisis. Yeah, so some kind of crisis could get in the way, like, while other jobs, it's, if it's a desk job, like, then you got your hours if it's something different. And sometimes there is that, but not as much. But when you own a business, it could happen at any time. Mm -hmm. Like, there have been times when you've gotten texts when we've been hanging out and you have to do that because, you know, it's part of your job. And okay, that's fair. And so when that's happened, have you felt like I'm not taking care of you? Do you feel like my no. clients get more attention than you do? I don't feel like I've gotten cheated out of attention. No, I feel like I still get enough attention. I don't go like, I don't feel like I try to go begging for attention. No, or anything you're good like about that. that. Yeah. I mean, I don't feel like I personally need a ton of attention. Do you ever resent, like, when I have to work and you, and I'm like, Jack, I can't do this right now. I really, I have client. Like, say you had a day off of school and I didn't have a place for you to be and you were going to be home and you were like, Mom, what are we doing today? And I was like, I'd be like, dude, you're on your own today. How would that make you feel? Sometimes a little, I'm a little bit disappointed, mm -hmm. but I understand it. It's school's kind of a like it fills the void for that middle of the day where you do a lot of your work and True. I have school work. So when we do that, it, I kind of understand it at this point where I was younger, a lot younger actually, like when I was six, I used to not really understand that. I thought, okay, like mom's home. Mm -hmm. So why isn't she applying with me? Right, right, right. Versus I realized you have an outside life. Right. So I kind of had to explain to you like my business and stuff. Yeah, you have... You have a business that you have to work on. It's not like a, if I don't pay attention for, uh, if I don't pay attention to it for this day, it's gonna survive. Like there are sometimes when you really need to do that. Yeah, that's true. And there's sometimes when I really need to be with you. Like, right. 
I try to, so it's kind of like a balance. I got to water that plant. Did you Mm -hmm. say I got to water that plant? That's what he said. Mm -hmm. All right. My next question is what have you learned? Do you think by having two parents who are entrepreneurs? What do you mean? Like entrepreneurs is in what you guys do or the way you guys do? Oh, like lifestyle versus the content of what we do. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk first about lifestyle. What have you learned about the entrepreneurial lifestyle? Uh, the lifestyle, well, it's very, I have to take this, I have to do this, this is a problem. It's very, out of nowhere, something can happen that's bad. Like I said, lightning can strike at any time. True. So that's one thing that I kind of learned. Like, there's always that thought in the back of my mind, like, there's going to be something that happens. But often, like, let's say we were shopping for something, mm-hmm. and you'd be like, I can put it aside for 15 minutes. We'll do that mm-hmm. later. Mm-hmm. So it's often I get a warning before that happens, so mm-hmm. it's not completely random. And so you're saying it's like there's – I'm hearing there's flexibility. There. Yes, there's flexibility. That's okay. Way. So then what have you learned content-wise about having two parents who are entrepreneurs, both who are coaches? Well, I learned a lot of things from my dad just that most kids wouldn't know. Like what? Like elevator pitches and those kind of things. Oh, yeah. And, I learned about those kind of things just because that's what he does. And that's I like to be a part a of what you guys do. You do. And like I like to be a part, part of your yes. conversations, yes, even though true. you might not like it that much. <laughs> that's true. John and I haven't had a private conversation in 12 years. That's true. Yeah. But I mean, there are sometimes when you definitely put a boundaries up, like I can't be part of this. True. Because, I mean, I can't be a part of everything. So it sounds like you're learning a lot of content, but it also sounds like you're learning how to understand that not everything's about you mm-hmm. all the time. And that's okay. And you have not died. I know, right? And you still love me. <laughs> yeah. And I still love you. Yeah, and I still love dad. And you still love dad. Yeah, him too. <laughs> the other guy. Um, the other thing you were telling me about, I wanted to talk about this. I know that you're really interested in what we do, and you were kind of surprised at how influential influential our work was. Can you talk a little bit about that? You said that to me recently. Uh, yeah, so when I was little, when my mom worked at Method 360 or something like that, I, she would help me with things and I didn't really realize, like, I just thought, oh, every mother has this instinct to, you know, talk to me about what people are really feeling when they're mad at me or what I've done wrong and that kind of stuff. And I never really realized that other people, that's different for other people. Mm -hmm. I feel like you understand me a lot. Mm -hmm. There's just some moms who don't understand their kids as much. Mm -hmm. So that's helpful. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. And can you elaborate a little bit more? No, you had just said... You, you realize that the way I helped you is the way I helped other people. Yeah, that's and, okay, yeah. And, and you, when, I think when you said that, you were like, you got why I do my business. Because mm-hmm. you I, cause benefit like, from it too. What, I've had this resource for all these years. Like, I've kind of had... Me? Yeah. Aww. <laughs> I've had this resource, <laughs> my mother, Thanks. Uh, for a long time. And I never really realized how much it had helped me and I would have been an entirely different person without it. Mm-hmm. So when you helped other people, it kind of made me realize, wait, this isn't just something that just happens. I'm lucky for it. Like, oh, this is my boy. Thank you. All right. Last question. Do you want to own your own business? Uh, yes, I do. Are you sure? I mean, I don't know the entire, like what it is. I mean, I would like to own my own business just because it's, I look up to you guys and I really appreciate what you guys do and it would be interesting and I really want to try it and. We're not sure what it'll be yet, right? Yeah, no, not sure, but I think it would be fun. Do you like the flexibility of being an entrepreneur? Yeah, I do. And I like that idea. I like how it could, there's so much flexibility, but there's also time when I really have to work and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's hard work, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So let's go back to our original question. Should moms, it's, it's hard being a mom and having a kid, right? And it's hard being a kid who has a mom who owns I her own business. Never really thought of it as anything else, but yeah, I guess. I guess, right? You've never really been home the entire time. No, nope, I've never been a stay at home mom. That's a hundred percent. You know what I was when, when you were up to two years old. So you don't remember, you don't remember. So you don't know any, so whether I had a job or I own my own business, you're fine, right? It's actually made you better. It's made I personally you... think it has because it's also made me understand that there's time for other things. And when I'm older, I'm sure uh, that if I have friends who need to have work or have shifts that they have to cover, then I would understand that a lot more than if a kid had to stay at home mom. 
and then she was home all the time. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'm just saying that it help, it will help me. And it so you're me. You, it, it's worked out for you, is what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. I okay. don't know. <laughs> I mean, you just have never had it the other way, right? Yeah, it's true. It's always been me working. So we have figured it out for our family. And so I guess I wanted to have Jack on to encourage women to try to take time for themselves because your kids can figure it out and they are, can be better for themselves and their futures when they learn how to be independent and learn that not everything revolves around them. And, and also, like, it just, like, that's what I wanted. I wanted to do a business. And if you have an itch to do your business, it might be something to explore. I think it was interesting because I never heard about you being like, oh, I, I don't know whether I can be a mom and a business owner. Did that ever happen to you? Did I ever like, worry about being both? Yeah. No, I only have one kid and that makes it a lot easier. That's true. And I know I just, because I knew that I could teach you how to be independent and I knew that I didn't have to do everything for you and that you could do stuff for yourself, the older that you got. Uh, but no, I just knew that we would figure it out. I just knew that we could figure it out no matter what. It's awesome. Thanks, babes. I love you. I love you. Bye. Thanks everybody. What I love about this interview with Jack is that there's basically three things he identifies that I want you to start thinking about how you could apply this in your life. When He tells me that when I go after what I want, that it matters to him because he's impressed with what I'm doing and he thinks it's valuable to the world. If my kid can see the value in it, it helps me see the value in it. And I know that when I help my clients, they get value too. There's something you want to bring to the world. There's something valuable you have inside of you. Are you making the mistake of keeping it inside because you're so worried about the guilt that might show up? Second, Jack sees himself as very independent. He has learned how to do things. He's become more of who he is and he's had to do some uncomfortable stuff because he's had to learn how to be more independent. And I can see this kid coming into adulthood. Like I know he's ready to move through middle school into high school because he's got the independence from being allowed to do things on his own. And I think there's no bigger gift that we can give our kids. The third thing that he comes up with is he really sees that his future is in his hands. He knows he can create whatever he wants because he's seen his parents do it. And how empowering is that? I think about my childhood and what it would have been like if I had understood that everything is my choice. I have the power to create or to stay paralyzed and not create. But this kid can make anything happen. And he absolutely knows that at age 12. What an empowering thing. So I hope you can take some lessons away from this interview with my son, Jack. He's got some insights that I was really impressed with, and I hope you can use them in your own life as you move forward, take action, and start to bring your idea into the world, grow your business, start your business, get your goal. If you need some help with this, go to my website. I've just created a whole new web page. So it's www.jenliddy.com slash free sources. That's F-R-E-E sources. And these free resources are there for you to help you get started. There's like three or four of them on there and they're designed to make you take your first steps and just get started investing in yourself with your time and your energy. I hope this was helpful. I loved doing it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I loved doing it. And I will see you, meet you back here next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more free tools and video trainings at www.jenliddy.com slash free sources. That's F-R-E-E sources. If you found this podcast helpful, I'd be so grateful if you subscribed and gave a review. And if you have a friend who'd benefit from today's topic, tool, or strategy, please share the Idea Space podcast with her. That way, together, we can help more women achieve their dreams and take action on their ideas. Isn't it time we all were able to get what we want? Join me next week, and remember, right now, all you need to do to make your idea a reality is take the very next step you know how to. Bye!